everybody, and welcome in to episode 53 of the Dorton and Duck at the Bay podcast. I am Lucas Dorton. I am joined by hardcore Cubs fan, second time now per- coming on the show for the Dorton Duck Debate podcast, Austin Jensen. Austin, how are you doing tonight, my friend? Oh, doing pretty good, Dort. How are you doing? I can't complain. I can't complain. Now, I, I have to let you know now that if you're going to mention anything about Arenado, you're off. I'm finding <laughs> someone else. I mean, he went to the Cardinals, so I mean, I hate the Cardinals, so I, I can't say too much about it. So <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Um, so yeah, so we're going to get into it. Obviously folks, like I mentioned, Austin Jensen was on here last year to talk about the Cubs. Uh, and now he's on this year again. So we're excited to do it. Talk some Chicago Cubs. You ready to get the ball rolling? Oh, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Let's get it going. Let's do do it. Uh, so last season, the Cubs finished 34 and 26, which is good for first in the NL central. Uh, obviously with the shortened season, only playing 60 games. Uh, that's all they were able to do. So 34 and 26. Um, so I guess going into the season, uh, we kind of talked about it a little bit, but what was your expectations going into last year? Um, well, like we said last year, with the new manager being David Ross, the firing of Joe Madden the year prior, it was, I guess, I, I expected them to compete, just kind of like I'm going to probably talk about later tonight. Um just on paper, you can see the roster. I mean, they yeah. look like they can win a division, and sure enough, they did, which, you know, I didn't really think they were going to win the division, to be quite <laughs> honest. I thought maybe, like, St. Louis or even, even as much as I hate Milwaukee, too. I thought yeah. Milwaukee would do something, too. But, I mean, I don't know. Like, it was really nice to win the division. I mean, obviously, the outcome wasn't the greatest, getting swept by those stupid Marlins again. Some of those Marlins in the postseason. But, um, yeah, I mean, overall, I mean, it was a great year, won the division. I mean, that's always what you want to do. But, um, yeah, it definitely exceeded my expectations. I think for me last year and kind of a little bit this year, too, the Central, I feel, is the most uh, – the NL Central, I feel, is the most wide-open division where I don't think there's one true front runner. I, I think Oh, absolutely, 100%. And I think as a fan for you, I'm sure it's probably, you know, probably a little stressful and worry sometimes because you don't have it locked up like you might think. But I'm sure it's kind of cool to see that the other teams are competing and it makes for a fun race. There's a lot as many, especially in the National League, when you obviously look at the three divisions, obviously with the East, you know, you got Atlanta with, you know, um, their their talent and then of course out west you know with the dodgers you know always adding yeah. every year and then of course the padres you know landing you know that huge deal with tatis and you know machado and all them you don't really look at the central too much for talent you mean and you know i think a lot of teams are really young especially with pitching like milwaukee you know with the uh, hater and uh god i, f- I uh, forgot some of their starters brandon woodruff's one of them um, Cincinnati's got a young roster. Um, Irino Suarez, I think, is one of the most underrated infielders in baseball. Uh, he's, I think, their shortstop. But yeah, and then of course, you know, St. Louis. You know, I mean, of course, I'm not gonna, of course, mention what just happened, but you know who they have now. And I didn't say his name. No, you didn't. Name. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't. No. Um. But yeah, and then, but yeah, I mean, minus maybe Pittsburgh. I think because Pittsburgh, I think, is in a ginormous rebuilding phase where they just kind of just gutted out everybody. Really, honestly, it's wide open. I mean, I think uh, I think MLB predicted the Brewers to win, but I don't think it was by that much because I think they had them predicted winning only like 86 games, which Mm. compared to like other people in the division or throughout the league, like you have the division winners winning like 90 to 95 games. So, yeah, I mean. It's a very wide open division, and yeah, it's kind of, it's very worrisome. But I think with the moves we've made this off season, and it's not a lot of people don't think it's big moves, but if you kind of look at it from like an in depth perspective, I think it's definitely something to compete with for a division crown again. For sure, yeah, no, um, I you know you definitely hit it right on the head, and we'll obviously get into some of the moves that the Cubs have made, but. You know, I, I definitely think that they put themselves in a position to be competitive for next year, too. Um, 
But yeah, it'll be interesting to see. So last season, uh, during the year, obviously finishing in first place, a, a lot of things have to go right for that to happen. Now say what you want, 60 games. Do you think if it is a full season, a full 162, where do the where do you think the Cubs would have finished last year? You still think top of the division or somewhere else, or maybe miss the playoffs? Um, obviously, as a Cub fan, you know, I mean, given like you would think I'd give the biased opinion, but I mean, the way we were playing, I mean, like, I definitely could see making the playoffs. But if you really watched like the Cubs, like I like obviously I do, and obviously other Cub fans could probably agree with me if they watch your podcast, it's they were extremely streaky at times. Like if you like, like when they would hit the, like when they would hit, like if like they would hit like, Oh, they're the best team in baseball. And then they look like they should be hitting it off a tee the, the next day. So it's like, and that, and, and, and in the end, that's what killed us in the postseason too is just our streakiness. But no, I, I definitely, if it was a full season, I definitely think we definitely could have competed, especially the way Darvish was that year. Second in Cy Young voting last year. I think he was. Yeah, pretty positive second in Cy Young voting behind Bauer. Having a great year. Hendricks was fantastic. Lester, you know, I mean, as older as he he is, like, he still goes out and competes. Great, you know, great veteran. But, yeah, no, I definitely think, you know, they definitely could have at least competed for the division crown. I don't know if they would because – but, you know, I got to stay positive. That's right. <laughs> About positivity on the podcast here. <laughs> oh, well, Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, so last season, so what were some things that you noted? Obviously, you, you kind of mentioned it um, a little bit, but if you want to dive maybe a little more into it, is, is what were some of kind of the Achilles heel of the Cubs and maybe why they weren't as consistent like you were talking about? Too many strikeouts. I mean, if if I had to be really blunt, probably too many strikeouts, not much plate discipline, especially if you watch like Baez and all of them sometimes, like as great as Baez is as a player defensively, everything else, I mean, they don't call him Almago for a reason, which is magician in Spanish, right. if you didn't know. But um, as great as he is, he, if you watch sometimes, like he would just have absolutely zero plate discipline. Same with Bryant and Rizzo and just all those guys. Um, Definitely another Achilles heel, like I said last year in the podcast that I was actually nervous about and had every right to was the bullpen, you know, mm-hmm. how if they could stay healthy and, you know, maybe hold leads down. Definitely wasn't ideal. I mean, I, I'm pretty I think at one point last year, Kimbrough was removed from the closer spot because of how bad he was, which still again, I'm going to probably talk about it later. It scares me yeah. <laughs> to death. Yeah, <laughs> but um. But yeah, definitely just too many strikeouts, a lot of errors at some points in games, and just uh, then, of course, the bullpen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with you. I, I definitely think the Cubs have always been a team. It seems like they're they're a, <laughs> they're very much a high risk, high reward, and I say that in, in the mindset of when a lot of the players that are there, when they're swinging, they're swinging to do damage instant damage right away and a lot of the times it works but a lot of the times it doesn't and that kind of was what you were talking about with the high strikeouts I mean Javier Baez is one of the most aggressive hitters in baseball um obviously you know Kyle Schwarber he's not there anymore but Kyle Schwarber very aggressive hitter as well too you know Chris Bryant can can't is at times well as well so uh yeah I mean Mm. not that there's nothing wrong with being aggressive but you do have to find a balance of being aggressive and also taking what the pitching gives you and trying not to do too much with it. But, um, yeah, yeah interesting. they definitely were trying. Yeah. They, they were definitely trying to attack, like just at the wrong time. Like, and, like you would always see Baez like always swinging at like sliders or curveballs or changeups in the dirt and just looking mm-hmm. absolutely ridiculous. And then just like, or even sometimes too, like when he's got 96 coming down right down the middle, he just fans on it. Yeah. And, and but I mean that's just the way the league is now I think right and that's you know especially someone as myself being a baseball player like the league's changed so much where it's now it's the era of the long ball it's not you know small ball anymore so I right. I definitely see like their approach and like what they're doing but like they're they're there's sometimes too especially as a player it's like okay you really like you got to learn some discipline like you got to lay off that stuff in the dirt stuff at your grill mm-hmm. you know at your head and stuff like that like there, there's 
like you said, there's got to be a major balance. Right, absolutely. Um, so last year, was there any big names or, or player? I, well, I guess not big names, but maybe names under the radar that played really well that maybe not a non-Cubs fan wouldn't recognize or pick up right away or someone that you're really pleased to see play well? Um, The first one, actually, I think everyone kind of knows really well just because he's won an, M- he's won an MVP award before. Uh, first one's Chris Bryant. A lot of yeah. people don't really give him the credit he deserves. And, and I've said it for, year, for years, too. When he screwed up his shoulder, I think it was in 2018, I think it was, he he's – Obviously, I think you and I can agree because we always have the debates, the lovely oh, yeah. debates off camera of Arenado versus Brian. It's going to, I mean, maybe you'll see it my way now that he's not there, unfortunately, anymore. But no, I, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but um, yeah, he was, he actually, I mean, I know it was, again, like I said, I, I, I feel like I'm going to say this a lot now, you know, 60 games, you know, you got to take it with a grain of salt but right right you know exactly. i mean he was he was playing well i mean he i if i i think i looked at his stats thing one time i think it was like he was hitting over 285 which wow obviously in today's game you want to be above 300 especially with the long ball stuff but like i mean granted what he was doing prior to that prior to when he screwed up his shoulder a few years ago i mean like strikeouts were high batting average was under 260 like i mean not not what bryant should be especially as a former nl mvp right um another one um everyone always knows him for that one special moment on sunday night baseball against the nationals david bode oh Um, yeah he's he's another one where it's like you know if bryant wasn't there or you know he would be an everyday player it's just kind of one of those things he's He's one of those players, especially since I've watched him grow, like he's one of those guys where you can just call and he'll produce in some way, shape, or form. I mean, like he proved it mm-hmm. against the Nationals that one game. He's done it so many other times before. Um, great, very underrated glove, in my opinion. Very underrated defensive player. Very solid bat. Can, he he literally could start anywhere else, I think. I think so. Yeah. I mean, mine is obviously the obvious people that have solid third basemen, like sure. now the Cardinals, the Padres, like like teams like that. But like, he could go start anywhere else, really, if he wanted to. Um, I'd probably say, you know, another one a lot of people don't get. I don't think give him credit for. We'll talk about probably pitching in a little bit, but Kyle Hendricks is another one. Yeah. I've said it for so many, you know, the last few seasons. One of the best changeups I have ever seen on a pitcher like ever and i'm taught and like this like it's his just mechanics you know he doesn't blow like 95 by you like he's 88 to 91 tops and he just and he just deals like i think two years ago he was in the running for cy young like he he's definitely wanting to be one of our top pitchers again this year and yeah i think that's pretty much kind of it really sure sure yeah um no I, I, those are and i mean uh, David Bodie is someone that I really like. Um, I think he's a Colorado boy. I think he's from Colorado. So I got, got to give him some respect there too. Um, but yeah, no, he, you know, everyone, a lot of people talk about the bat with him and he has a really solid bat, but I, and I'm glad you brought it up. I think a lot of times people, um, they, they, when, they, when one player is really known for one thing, a lot of the time, something else that they do is not looked at as much or not talked about as much. David Bodie is a really solid defender. He's going to make some nice plays for you, and I think you're exactly right. On a, most most other teams, he is probably the starting third baseman there. Oh, sure. every day, every day starter, hundred percent. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. Um, so going into the postseason now, um, obviously that did not end how you wanted it to. Uh, you kind of touched on it a little bit, um, but what was your thoughts going into that series and then obviously coming out of the series what was your thoughts then uh when i when i saw we were playing the marlins first i'm just like this is going to be 2003 all over again isn't it just as a joke <laughs> like and i was like well you know <laughs> <laughs> i guess i guess i can't blame steve bartman or alex gonzalez because there was no fans in the stands and we didn't really <laughs> bobble a routine ground ball so so, I mean, it's just something about those Marlins, man. My, 
my initial thought was when they when they beat us. I'm like, every time the Marlins are in the postseason, they win the World Series. Mm-hmm. Like, like they just they just swept us. So it's just like, oh no, oh yeah. oh no, they they might make a run. But then of course I think they faced Atlanta next, and I think they lost. And I think they lost in like four. Yeah. I think, or some long lines of that, but yeah, I know they didn't make it past the wild card series. Yeah, are they doing the same format this year for the playoffs, or are they going back to the regular? I think they're doing the regular. I don't think they're I having liked, the I like the best of three. I really did. You did? I actually did. I okay. I've always said for a while the wild card series, or at least the wild card portion of the playoffs, should be a best of three instead yeah, of just the one game. Me personally, I like the one game because it's like, well, one, you're going to bring in more fans. So on that side of it, MLB's already struggles to bring in fans. So that's a huge thing there. Try to be able to watch one game. But secondly, I just think the intensity and like the, the, the game itself is more behind it because it is one game. So you better win or else you're going home and there's a lot more on the line for it. You have to leave everything out on the field. I like the one game personally. Now I've been on the winning end of that, and I've also been on the losing end of that too, <laughs> of the of the wild card game. So, yeah, we have to. I mean, I I mean I like the one game, but I think also too, it's like you know, I feel like it gives you more of a chance. Like, I mean, maybe not more of a chance. Maybe that's the wrong word, but like, maybe it gives you more of an opportunity to win more. I think, sure. and maybe like brings more of a strategy to it. But I mean, also too, granted it was only 60 games. So I guess, you know, you have to bring in more, try to get the players to play, you know, close to 162 as you can. So maybe obviously if you go through a full season, you know, obviously maybe they don't want to play more. I mean, who knows? I mean, it is a long season. Right. So, I mean, yeah, yeah I, don't know. I thought, I, I just, I, I thought I, I liked it, obviously, but I mean, like, let me look at Miami when they benefited from it. Like yeah. they beat us. I mean, no. Yeah. It just I feel like it would also it make it more interesting, but I mean also too it's like the one game playoff, you know, too obviously, you know, you got to you go balls to the wall for, yeah. you know, to continue. Absolutely. No, that's that's a good point. That's a good point for sure. Um so I guess now we can move into the off season. The Cubs have had a fairly busy off season so far. They they've they've been they've been busy like you mentioned, a lot of under the radar signings, a couple trades here and there. Um, so we'll just get into a couple of them, a few of them here. So obviously, first one I want to talk about is Jake Arrieta coming back. I know you yes, are sir. really pleased about that, and I'm sure any Cubs fans have probably got to be really happy to have him back. I knew I maybe not getting rid of my Arietta T-shirt was not was a really smart idea because I I don't know I just always had a feeling he'd come back eventually, but yeah. Uh, when when the area of signing happened, I was just I was so happy. Like, yeah, he's a few years older than what he was when he was with Chicago. But I mean, like, how can you take out his face value for what he did for us as a franchise? Like, he was our he was our ace during our World Series run, our 2015 run when we you know were in the when we you know beat upset the Cardinals and went to the championship series and whatnot. But I mean, I mean, I mean, what can you say about Arietta, especially in his tenure with the Cubs? Like he like. Mind you, he went on a run where he had more no hitters than he did losses at one point. Like that's that's absurd. Like I don't even think Kershaw has done that, and Kershaw's labeled yeah. the best pitcher in baseball. Yeah, like yeah. like no, that's that absurd. Is, yeah. Like like everyone's. I I remember like reading on like Facebook and whatnot. Like I was talking to a few Cub fans and whatnot. They're like, oh well, he's older. You know, you're wasting the money and stuff like that. And I'm like, are are you not like, are you not like remembering like at face value, what he brought to us. Like, yeah. he was a key portion to our World Series run. Absolutely. Like, I mean, I mean, granted, yeah. I mean, I mean, granted, it's only a one-year deal. He technically has a 2022 opt-out, which, I mean, he can re-sign after this year if he wants to. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, I mean, granted, yeah, Arietta, absolutely. I mean, I absolutely love the signing. And it was for cheap money. It was cheaper than what he was actually offered by some teams. And I think just I and I, I said it forever. I'm like when he went to the Phillies, I was like, I don't think he's gonna do well in Philly. And I mean, I was right, but I mean, like, because I because he never wanted to leave the Cubs. He never did. But when you have, and I've said it for a while, one of the worst sports agents ever in Scott Boras. You just go where the money is, and 
but thankfully that kind of went against it because you know he went for a cheaper contract you know compared to some other teams i forgot who he got offered by but but yeah no it, it's great to see jake back i can't wait to see what he does and definitely repping the cubby blue again is always a good sight to see that's a great yeah i, I really like to pick up a lot um one, number one like you mentioned one year contract cheap money if it doesn't work out and he's awful well, oh well you, you didn't lose anything but if he's even a fraction of himself when he was with Chicago a few years ago, you will take that in a heartbeat. And I, I think, you know, with him being here and having extreme amount of success here, I think he could potentially get back to that close to that. I don't know if we're going to see prime Jake Arrieta again because it might be a little bit removed from that. But like I mentioned, if, we, if Jake Arrieta can give us half of what he was able to give you before – you can't complain about that at all. And I think that's what you look for, honestly. I think you can do it. I think you can. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And plus, I didn't mention this either, but I think, too, having that, you know, just that veteran in your rotation, it, it, it's kind of what Lester was in a, in a sense. Like, obviously, Lester can still compete and whatnot. I think he's going to do that in Washington this year. But, like, you know, I mean, just having that veteran in your, you know, rotation, especially that guy in the clubhouse and stuff mm-hmm. like that. You know, it, it, it does so much dividends to the younger guys, especially the younger guys that are that I'll probably mention later on that are going to probably show out this year, especially in the rotation and in the bullpen. And just even and even some of the position players, too. Like, they, they need that veteran that's there. And I think Jake can yeah. be that guy. I agree. I agree. Yeah, veteran leadership, even if he's not able to, to do much on the field, just being there and having the younger guys see someone that has had success and kind of pick the brain a bit, that's, that's – yeah, that's great. Um, David Ross did, D- David Ross did it too. When, you know, when he was running his, right. his, his swan song too, with right. Contreras being the everyday guy and, and Carantini too. So. Yeah, no, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, also signed another pitcher, Trevor Williams, uh, formerly with the Pittsburgh pirates to a one-year deal. Uh, I like this one a little bit. Um, where do you see him fitting in, in the rotation? You think he's a starting rotation? Or you think maybe a long relief position in the bullpen? This one is really tough for me because I personally, and they've been talking about it, you know, all spring, you know, well, not really all spring, spring training just started, but all winter. And then obviously starting spring training today, I think today was first day of spring training. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yep. 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 First day. Yep. yep. Um, should be a national holiday next yeah. opening. Day. <laughs> yeah, I, agree. I agree. No. Um, but, um, they've been talking for the last few weeks about the Cubs possibly running a six-man rotation which I would not be opposed to it at all I think it gives obviously the starters especially the key guys like Hendricks and Arietta and stuff like that and um uh you know an extra day to rest and whatnot and especially that can pay dividends in the long run towards you know when you're fighting you know August September time you know trying to fight for a yeah. postseason postseason run but um yeah I definitely think he could fit in the rotation i think he's gonna have some tough competition is i think he could probably be the fifth guy um fifth or fourth starter um like i said there's a lot of talent that could start and there's a lot of talent that can fit in that role but if he definitely wasn't if he's not going to be in the rotation and they don't run a six-man rotation i definitely can see him being a long relief guy yeah he can be a very versatile ver- versatile pitcher i think he if, like if they need him to start like a day where like maybe like hendrick's Hendricks or, or one of the new guys you're probably going to mention soon, Zach Davies from the Darvish deal, you know, or someone goes, or just someone in general just goes down in rotation. I think he can pick it up easily and be that guy too. Absolutely. But yeah, no, definitely a good signing and a good arm. Well, you can never have too much pitching, that's for sure. That's one thing, I, especially as a Rockies fan, I found out you can never have too much pitching. And so that's uh, a great one to have. Uh, yeah. You got, man. Man, we could talk yeah. about the Rockets another time, obviously, but like, man, like, they're so, like, oh my God. If you guys just had, like, pitching, just, yeah. I, I would consistent. even say, like, just consistent, consistent pitching. pitching, consistency. Yeah. yeah. You guys would have definitely pushed for a championship series or a World Series. Definitely. Great. It's just the biggest killer in baseball. It is. Yeah. It's what's killed the Cubs so many times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, so the Cubs signed an outfielder, maybe first baseman too. No, Anthony Rose has got that. Jock Peterson signed him to a one-year deal. 
Uh, I think there's an option for 2022 as well, too. Um, and I, I kind of, I'm kind of in the same boat as a Jake Arrieta thing. Obviously, I think, jo- you know, Jack Peterson's younger. Um, he's been kind of scuffling the last few years. Um, I like this for him. I like this for him uh, just because sometimes you need to change the scenery to change things up and, and get back onto the thing again. So how do you feel about this? I love it. I really do. Um, I've always liked Jock Peterson. He's one of the very few Dodgers I've actually like liked, really. I don't like many guys in the Dodgers. Um, Bellinger and Mookie Betts are probably really the only other ones. And Corey Seager, I guess. Okay. But um, I've always liked Jock as a player. I always felt like, you know, in like the Dodgers, like, you know, kind of like big runs were, you know, prior to the World Series this year or this past year. You know, everyone, you know, always talked about, you know, Bellinger, Seager, you know, uh, Kershaw, Bueller, yeah. like all those guys. Nobody really ever talked about Jock Peterson. And I, and I mean, look at him. I mean, like he, you know, he's, I mean, really, it's not really much. I mean, like it's an accomplishment, but not really that great of a, an accomplishment compared to like MVPs, gold gloves, stuff like that. He's won a home run derby. He's very, very good in the outfield. I mean, watching him play. Um, I think personally, I think it benefits us because I think defense needs to be more of a priority this year. And I think he fills that void more than Schwarber does in my eyes. Obviously, I don't want to see Schwarber walk away. Right. But because obviously Schwarber's bat can just do absolutely unreal damage. Right. But I, but but Peterson can swing it too. And I and you know, I think, you know, like I said, it's a one year deal. And I think and I think the Cubs have been really smart about this too, because they're giving these guys, you know, these one year deals, you know, or minor league deals. Because they, they gave Pedro Strope a minor league deal. He finally is back on the team after a year of absence. I think he went – I forgot where he went after we released him uh, or two years ago. But, yeah, no, we signed him to another minor league deal. Like, they're signing these, you know, one, two-year deals to these guys. I, I think, personally, I like to think they're tryouts, so to speak, kind of in, in a way. You know, try to test the waters, so to speak. You know, and I, I think Peter if Peterson can produce this year, I think, really, you're going to see him go to maybe like a – three, four year deal. Uh same with Arietta. I think Arietta might, you know, end his career in Chicago. Um, but yeah, no, back to the whole Peterson thing. Yeah. Great signing. Uh very underrated glove in my eye in the outfield. Um yeah. and definitely a very underrated bat. And I think it's gonna help us in the lineup a lot. Absolutely. I want to touch on a couple of things. One of them being about when when you mentioned when he was with the Dodgers, all the other star power there, sometimes Jock Peterson did get kind of left behind. Um, and it's no shade at any of the Dodgers players. I mean, when you're working oh, with Cody Bellinger, Mookie Betts, Clayton Kershaw, you know, Walker Bueller, all those guys, well, somebody's probably going to get forgot about it. It's having me Jock Peterson. But, you know, the did Cubs, I say Dallas Bueller? My, I don't know. Bad. I, if you did, I didn't thing. notice. If you did, I didn't even notice. If, I just recognized that. Like, did I say Dallas Bueller? I think I did. But if okay. I did, I meant Walker Bueller. <laughs> Well, that's what, hey, that's what makes mistakes. <laughs> uh, um, but anyways, I really like, I really like what the Cubs are doing this off season, and, and we'll get into the trade here um, in, in a few in a few seconds here. But I just want to make one comment before we get into that. I really like what the Cubs are doing this off season as far as trades and or uh, like free agency signings and stuff, like you were talking about before. A lot of one-year, two-year, you know, minor league-type deals. I like to think of them as potential contracts. Okay, if, if it works out, great, great potential, and that's going to be a phenomenal pickup for them because other teams are going to look like idiots if they turn into ballers or they become the ballers that they were again. And if it doesn't work out, well, no one's going to say anything. No one's going to bat an eye because it's, it didn't work out and you didn't give them a big contract. It was a one-year prove-it kind of deal, and – uh, I like that. I like that a lot for the Cubs. I think they're they're doing a great job with that. It could also be very and I and I've said this to so many people too. I was like, if they do produce and you did you and you don't really have the cap space to maybe give them a long term deal, you can use it as trade bait. You know, get yeah. get some guy get some guys that you know can even benefit the roster, like like deadline deals, like right. trade deadline deals, and make a, you know get some more solid pitching, like like how he did with Chapman, you know, yes. in twenty sixteen. There's talent like that, even if you're definitely going to definitely be pushing for a playoffs playoff run, like it can even be used as that too. Like I said, I really like a lot of people have been really kind of crapping on the Cubs, like just for, cause everyone's been talking about the white Sox and you know, they're, what they're doing and everything else. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm like, don't sleep on the Cubs either. Like, 
Mm-hmm. Like, we're, I mean, granted, yes, maybe trading Aloy Jimenez was not the greatest idea for Jose Quintana, but I mean, you know, I mean, I always, I always say, I always say that I'm too. I said, hey, you traded uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. for a big game James Shields. So I mean, right. yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. You, you can't be knock, narking on us. But, yeah, no. I, I, I really do like what they've done this offseason. I mean, granted, I would have never traded Darvish. Sure. I mean, we'll probably talk about that here in a little bit. But, like, yep. but yeah. I mean, but yeah, no. Very, I mean, very smart moves. And it, it's the first offseason without Theo Epstein either. So, I think, because right. Theo Epstein left and whatnot. And Jed Hoyer is now fully in charge, which has been our GM the whole time. So, yeah, no. I, I definitely – really like what we've done this off season with these, you know, kind of little, like I like to call like sneaky deals. So to yeah, speak. exactly. Yeah. Um, so we'll get into that. You Darvish trade now, since you brought it up here. Um, so right, right into the year. One is one of the last things of 2020. Uh, talk about a great year. 2020 was, I'm sure it was just a, the cherry on top for you with this trade too. Um, trading uh, Victor Caratini and you Darvish to the Padres. For pitcher Zach Davies, uh, infield prospects Reginald Presado um, and Yelson Santana, and outfield prospects Owen Cassie and Ismail Mania. Um, so first off, what was your initial your 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 initial knee jerk reaction when you heard that Darvish was getting traded to the Padres? What the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> That's exactly that. That that was my initial thought at first. Was what are you guys doing? Yeah. <laughs> Second and Cy Young voting, and you're dealing them. Yeah. After about a week or so of you know thinking about everything and you know kind of assessing the situation, really, in all honesty, I the more I think about it, you know, if we didn't do that. I don't think we would get some of these guys like Jock Peterson and, you know, uh, Trevor Williams and uh, another guy, um, uh, Jake Marsnick, the center fielder from the Orioles, very underrated yes. player too. Yeah. Um, I don't think we would make those moves if we didn't trade Darvish and get rid of that cap space. Now, Carantini, Carantini is a very underrated catcher in my eyes. I think he's going to do well out in San Diego because he, I think he's going to be the everyday catcher out in San Diego, which is good for him because he deserves it. It's just kind of hard when, you know, you have Wilson Contreras, who in my eyes is one of the best, catch, one of the best catchers in the National League. Not the best, one of the best. I can't say that because Yachty's still in the league. You got to give respects to Yachty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, no. No, Carantini deserves it. And plus, Carantini's Darvish's catcher. So, obviously, it kind of goes hand in hand. Like, when Lester came to the Cubs, David Ross came with him. Like, it's just, it goes hand in hand. Um, but, yeah, um, I would say, you know, maybe in about five, six years, this trade's probably going to work out better because the prospects we got are not even 18 years old yet. Yeah. yeah. So, I think, th- I think two of them, the three prospects are under the age of 18 and I think one of them is 18. So I think obviously when you're building for the future, you know, building up the farm system and whatnot, this is a great move. And of course, you know, cutting out salary. Yeah. So yeah, at first I was just like, what is going on? Why are you trading, you know, your best, one of your best pitchers this past year, you know, but then at the end I was like, you know, Maybe none of this, none of these offseason moves would have happened if we didn't make didn't make the trade. So, as sad as I am to see Darvish go, you know, and I hope he does got great. Same as Carantini, I'm, you know, it it's almost what needed to be done in my eyes. Yeah, um, you know, obviously it's tough to talk about the prospects because, like you mentioned, I think they all range in the age range of like seventeen or twenty years old. So you're probably talking three, four, five years even before yeah. any of those guys are making an impact at the major league level. Um, but let's talk about the one person that we do know for sure will be in probably in the uh, Cubs rotation, Zach Davies. Uh, solid pitcher, probably back in the rotation type of guy. Um, but he's been a solid pitcher in the big league. So I, you're, I'm sure you're probably a little happy. Obviously, it's, you know, it's not you, Darvish, but he, he's a serviceable pitcher. Yeah, it is. Um, Davies, I, I mean, I watched him pitch because he was in Milwaukee at one point. Obviously, you see Milwaukee almost like every two, three weeks tops, you know, because they're in your division and whatnot. 
you, you tend to see him. I mean, he was really solid in Milwaukee. I mean, not, I mean, nothing really, you know, overpowering. It's kind of the same thing as Hendricks. You're basically getting two Kyle Hendrickses in my eyes. You mean nothing really that blows it by you, but can locate, has good stuff, you know, can compete. And I think that's, you know, it's a plus another thing too. It's a, another, you know, I think younger veterans, the correct terminology for Davies. He's not like a Arietta, but I, I think, I don't know. I don't know how old he is. I think he's like early thirties. I think I, I, I have no clue, but yeah, no, uh, he's definitely going to be in the rotation. I have him as probably the third or fourth starter on the rotation. Um, like just in that range, but but yeah, no, he's definitely gonna help us out a ton, I think. Um, so yeah, pretty. I mean, I was happy we got at least something that can maybe be with us this year instead of four or five years down the line. Uh, Zach Davies is 28. 28, there, okay, yeah, okay. So he's, I thought he was in his 30s. I thought he was in his 30s. I don't know why I thought he was in his 30s. Sorry, sorry, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're listening to this, we apologize. <laughs> Um, I, I apologize, you old. <laughs> no, yeah, I, it's, 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 you never know. You never know. Pro players can watch this stuff. Uh, I suppose. I suppose that's a good point. Exactly. <laughs> um, exactly. It's interesting. Yeah, we'll have to see how this trade is. And like I said, it's hard to evaluate, and it's hard to really say who won. You know, short term, yeah, the Padres definitely won. Long term, you know, if if two, three. Even if all four of these prospects turn into something great, then maybe we're talking about it being a, a bad trade for the Padres. Obviously, it's tough to tell now, but we'll have to see what happens for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. Plus, like I said, it's it's tough to bank on prospects, especially. I mean, I know I know their goal is to definitely rebuild the farm system because that's kind of right. what Theo really did when he – like Theo, as great as Theo Epstein was for our front office – like if you're a true Cubs fan and you follow the minor leagues and whatnot, he absolutely just torched our minor leagues, especially for all the deals we made, you know, getting guys like Hendricks and Hayward and all these other guys, you know, that to build our, you know, success we've had the last five, six years, like mm-hmm. he, it, he torched our minor leagues. And now I think this is kind of more of a, okay, we got to rebuild, you know, our minor league, our farm system, you know, and whatnot. And of course, obviously, you know, we got to get something in return to obviously compete for this year. So, I mean, in a way, I mean, yeah, you don't want to ever trade Darvish, but I mean, if you got to cut salary and you know you got to you know, you know, try to get some sort of value, you know, back in return to try to compete this year, I I guess this is the best they can do. And I mean, and and it's not even that bad, you know. Davies is a very solid pitcher, and I yeah, I think he's going to do well for us this year. And then of course, you know, depending on the four, you know, three four prospects we got in return that are under the age eighteen, you know, who knows? They could end up being you know starters in the next four or five years and right uh, hoisting the commissioner's trophy once again and no 108 year drought again <laughs> yeah i think he'll take that a world series what every five years or so six years yeah. well the way we're going about 108 but another <laughs> hundred not another 108 year drought and we'll win another one. Oh man <laughs> chris bryant's chris bryant's uh son who has another son ends up being the third baseman for the Cubs and they win another one <laughs> no I, I'm kidding uh, you never know hey you got a positivity right positivity yeah I've been trying to strive I've been trying to preach that lately so Absolutely. positivity <laughs> that's right that's right um so that's about it is was there any other really big moves or, or under the radar moves that you want to talk about or bring up before we move into some predictions for him? Um, first one that comes to mind is um, they just did it a few days ago. Uh, they re-signed one of the better bullpen arms that they um, that they had last year and Ryan Tapara. Very, very, very solid bullpen arm last year. Performed very, very well. He was kind of our seventh seventh inning guy setup man guy he kind of shared that with uh rowan wick who is our other kind of setup guy seventh inning guy um another one uh brandon workman uh pitched for the yankees last year i don't know if we mentioned that or not uh brandon workman was another one another one year deal uh andrew chafin another one yeah uh, one year deal 2022 opt out another pitcher uh we re-signed rex brothers i think it was a minor league deal um, I think it's a one-year minor league deal. Uh, Pedro Strobe's back with the Cubs after one year. He was kind of our 
basically our kind of our go-to setup guy for the eighth inning and whatnot in the our kind of our World Series run. And then, of course, Ian Happ resigned. Um, it was an arbitration deal, but, I mean, you can get Ian Happ and get Ian Happ. Um, but, yeah, other than that. And then, of course, Jake Marznick. Uh, I mentioned that earlier, the former center fielder for the Orioles. Um, very underrated glove, decent bad, definitely going to be a solid bench. I think think kind of a solid off, off the bench kind of guy. But, yeah, other than that, uh, it's been kind of really, really offseason thing, ones I can think of that we haven't talked about. Yeah. No, I, I you're you're right. I agree. I agree. Um, I think, yeah, a lot a lot of smaller moves, but a lot of moves that can have potential and then fit in little pieces here and there to help uh, make something happen for sure. Um, so moving to some predictions, everybody loves a good prediction. So Austin, where are the Chicago Cubs finishing next year in the division? If you have an actual 162, how do you think they're gonna do? That's fine. If not, I don't. I don't blame you because that's that's no. tough. But if you want to pick no. where they finish in the division, maybe a playoff run. What do you think? Um, this is always tough because usually when I'm trying to make a prediction, it just goes way south. <laughs> <laughs> but um, well, last year I said you know, you know, even with obviously the tough the letting go of Joe Madden as our manager, David Ross, first year manager. I really didn't have really that. I mean, I had expectations, but I wasn't really super high for expectations. But um, obviously, I'm not saying, you know, we're going to make it to the World Series or anything like that, especially, you know, that'd be nice. But, you know, I mean, when you got San Diego, the Dodgers, Atlanta, even Washington this year is, I think, going to be a very underrated sleeper team this year in the National League, I think. Uh, um, But, yeah. MLB has us predicted to finish second in the division. I don't know where in the world they thought where they think Milwaukee is going to be winning the division, especially with the Cardinals now, of course, making the moves that they made. And, um, but yeah, no, I think we can definitely, we have the potential to definitely repeat as NL Central champions. I really do. I, I think we do. Because um, now, win, win wise, I think we're going to be kind of where MLB really predicted us. And that's kind of between the 85 to 90 win range. Cause I think the NL central is going to be one of, one of the more toss up divisions this year. Yeah. There's really no really guarantee really. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I, I definitely agree kind of where the records were. I don't know really off the bat, really like every single one that in the division, but every right. single team, I think mine is Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh and Cincinnati, I think, were in the 85 to 90 win range. I think Cincinnati was like in like the low, like like 80, like 80 to 84. And then of course, obviously Pittsburgh was like in like the 60. But um, but yeah, no, I definitely think they have a chance to compete for the division this year. I think they have a good shot at winning the division. Obviously, a lot has to go into play for that to happen. But yeah, um, I definitely don't predict a World Series run. I'm not going to get too cocky, but I mean that'd be great. Um, just for the love of God, don't give us the freaking Marlins again in the playoffs. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Just don't give us the Marlins, and I will be content with whatever the heck we really do in the playoffs. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I would have probably agree with you. I think the Cubs are either going to finish first or second in that division for the sake of predictions. Um, I'm just going to say second right now, but if they finish first, will I be surprised at all? Absolutely not. You know, this is a team a few years removed and players have regressed since they won the World Series. Yeah, absolutely. But at the end of the day, this is still a really good team. You know, you have, you know, Chris Bryant, Javier Baez, Anthony Rizzo, Wilson Contreras, a solid pitching rotation. You know, bullpen is okay. You know, outfielders, all right. This is a team that is still really solid, and I think people are kind of underestimating them a little bit. Um, so I, I definitely see the Cubs making the playoffs next year for sure in a full 162. I could see it. We'll see what happens. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of well, because let's face it. I mean, lately it's always it's all been about the White Sox, White Sox, right. what they're doing for moves, and all oh, they got all this power and all the and all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, that's, I mean, that's great and all. I mean, the White Sox have definitely got a really good roster. Like they've really they've rebuilt. Jerry Reinsdorf has actually done something good, minus what he did with the Bulls. Finally, thank God, <laughs> thank God. But um, 
But yeah, no, everyone has been really kind of just talking about, you know, the White Sox and whatnot. They haven't really been talking about the Cubs. And I, and if, like I said, you look at this team on paper, like especially the potential like opening day starters and especially, you know, obviously the potential of running a six man rotation with the arms that they have. Like if they stay consistent, they have a shot at winning the division again easily. Mm-hmm. They have a they have. And, and I mean, say what you want about, you know, obviously, you know, it's 60 games and all this other stuff. But like, you know, for David Ross, uh, on ex- an, an, an inexperienced manager. His first year as a manager ever to win a, a division in Major League Baseball. That's unheard of. Yeah. Like, like it, it, that, that's not an easy task. Like, I don't I care if it's 60 games, 20 games, or a full 162 games. Like, it was, it was damn impressive that he was able to do that. But, like I said, if you look at the team on paper, like, you got, like, Ian Happ, you know, Jock Peterson, Jason Hayward, you know, Rizzo, Bryant, Contreras, like, guys, you listen. And even the, the young guy that I mentioned last year in the podcast, uh, Nico Horner, he's going to probably be our yeah. second baseman. Like these guys can do a lot of damage if they want to, and I think consistency is what's going to hold this team back. If there is any, I mean, and of course, obviously injuries. If there isn't, if there is any, knock on wood. Thank God. I hope. I hope not. But like I said, it's if this if this team can stay consistent and compete, and you know everything kind of you know where there's no injuries or not, I can definitely see this team at least you know at least winning the division again. And, and I think it would help a lot because, you know, we have a lot of decisions obviously after this year to make, because we have Chris Bryant's last year of arbitrations this year, same as Javi Baez and as well as Wilson Contreras, three guys that I would love to keep Cubs for life. (laughs) Um, And then of course, obviously Rizzo's deal is going to be done here soon. He's got, I think two years left. I mean, obviously this year and then the year after, then he's got a, negotiate again but like i said if this team is young this team's got a lot of veterans too uh a very solid manager and david ross a very players players type manager and david ross i think they've made some very very sneaky moves this year that while it's not along the lines of you know trevor bauer going to the dodgers or anything like that right i think I think it, it it's moves that obviously I don't think the media needs to salivate over, but it's moves that, you know, could help us, you know, come second half of the year. And I think, um, like I said, I, I, I will always believe in my team. So I, I got to obviously believe no matter, you know, what ends up happening. But um, the bull, the bullpen still scares me. I Kimbrell still scares me. But I mean, other than that, there's a lot of bright spots, especially the guys we signed like Workman and Chafin and just re-signing Tapara again, who was really good last year for us. So yeah, other than that, a lot of a lot of bright spots. And obviously I think the biggest question mark is gonna definitely be consistency. And I think that's what killed us in twenty eighteen. What killed what what we we missed the playoffs in twenty nineteen because of it. And and 2020 we made the we were back in the playoffs and but you know obviously consistency killed us again in the playoffs because we got swept by the those pesky marlins pesky marlins they're your Achilles here i could well i i i just couldn't blame steve bartman or alex gonzalez again so i couldn't blame either one of those actually i i've never been one of those cup fans to blame steve bartman i always blame gonzalez more than i do bartman yeah just trying to—he's just a fan. I was excited. A ball was coming his way. I don't you know. I don't think a Lou would have caught. Actually, maybe a Lou would have caught that. I mean, his glove was right underneath it, but I don't know if he would have or not. We'll never yeah. know. That's right. <laughs> well, That's we'll right. never World know. World. But we, de- we definitely know that. We definitely know Alex Gonzalez could have definitely fielded that ground ball. Oh yeah. Oh. Never made an air all year long, and then he just decides to do it the very next play, the very next pitch, and just like, are you kidding me? Most and first they had like a six, seven run in and then the rest was history. So, right. <laughs> uh, so we're at the end of the show here. So I'm going to do a couple more questions, get to know more about you as a baseball fan. So I think the last time you came on, I asked you your favorite all times Cub player. And I think your all time favorite MLB player that was not on the Cubs. Did I do both of those ones? You definitely mentioned um, the last time we I was on the show. Um, you kind of talked about like my hit, like how I became a Cubs fan, and like you know watching like guys like you know the younger guys like in 07 and 08 and 09, like Osoriano and Derek Lee and all them. Okay. I don't think you mentioned anything about the like around the league though. Okay. I don't so, think you did. so there you go then. So who is your all-time 
favorite player that, you know, they may have been on the Cubs at one time in their career, but they have to be known and spent the majority of their career somewhere else on another team. Is it? All right. Are you asking like my current player now? Like my favorite player now? It It can be now. It can be someone that played 15 years ago. Anyone. Ken Griffey Jr. Easily. Uh, that's a popular answer. A few people Ken, have said that. In my in my eyes, and and a lot of, like you always hear about like you know like the goat conversation. You and I always have that stupid goat oh, yeah. conversation. The NBA and LeBron and Jordan or whatever. Oh, yeah. I don't think we we give Ken Griffey Jr. enough credit for being maybe baseball's goat. I really don't think we do. You know, we we mentioned guys like like Hank Aaron and Barry Bonds and all these other guys. You never hear too much about Ken Griffey. Like Ken Griffey, obviously, is one of obviously in my is one of the sweetest left-handed swings you will ever see in baseball. Like of all time, his athletic ability and everything was amazing. And I I loved I love Ken Griffey. I actually believe it or not, one of my <laughs> so he had a Super Nintendo game out, and I still actually have my Super Nintendo to this day. Uh, and it's uh, Ken Griffey uh, Ken Griffey Jr. winning run. It's one of my it's still one of the best baseball games ever. Although the show, the show coming to Xbox this year is definitely going to be probably in the top of the best baseball best. game ever. So, Sorry. but yeah, no, it, easily my favorite player, like of all time, of all time, is definitely Ken Griffey Jr. I like that. I like that. Yeah, huge fan of that. Um, okay, so now these next two questions, these ones may be a little more. The first one may not be as difficult as the second one. So do as best as you can to think. So this uh-huh. one here. What is your all-time favorite Chicago Cubs moment? So it can be some random regular season game in August, or it can be a playoff moment. But for you, what is your all-time favorite Cubs moment? Well, obviously, mine is winning the World Series, obviously sitting in front of my living room television watching. Obviously, I'm going to exclude that because okay. obviously I think any, any, any Cubs fan would, would obviously say that. Okay. Obviously, and and it, and it is it is one of my favorites. But I think if I had to, oh gosh, this is tough because I have a lot of them. I was there, I was there for Game Six in 2016 in the Championship Series when we beat the Dodgers. I was actually in Chicago at Wrigley Field. I was sitting up in the um the rooftops. We had okay. we got tickets last minute and that was awesome like i i it was so loud at wrigley field i kid you not the building i was on in the rooftops was shaking like it was shaking i couldn't i couldn't hear my father my dad who was sitting right next to me couldn't hear hear him at all like we were cheering i couldn't hear him at all like that that's usually, awesome usually, usually you can hear when someone's sitting right next to you like literally like right next to you couldn't hear yeah. him at all <laughs> That's one. Um, I was actually there for the David Bodie walk off against the Nationals. Yeah. I was actually there for that. I was on the bleachers for that one. I've actually been really blessed to actually be a part of some good moments. I was um, definitely either the Bodie one, um, the Bodie walk off, or or um, Game Six, the NLCS in Game Six in 2016 was definitely my favorite in person moments. I should say, as a as a Cubs fan, definitely. I like that. I Definitely. like that. Yeah, you are blessed, man. Some of big moments that have happened in Cubs his recent Cubs history you've been a part of. That's really cool. Nah, there's not a lot of people that can say that. Yeah. Well, obviously, of course, obviously the 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 gimme is to watch your team win the World Series. I mean, it's definitely a right. fun moment. Right. Okay. Other, yeah. I haven't really watched many sports teams other than the Patriots and the Blackhawks win their championships. So it's really – it, it, plus, when it's been 108 years since you've seen your team do it, like obviously I wasn't alive 108 years ago, but but yeah, so yeah, those definitely are that. Those are my three. I'll give you my three favorite moments. Right. Those are my like three. It. I like it. Now, what is your all-time favorite non-Cubs baseball moment? Oh man, now that's a tough one. This is the one that typically stumps people because they really got to think. If you can't, don't worry about it. I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, no, no pressure. Just put me on the spot live on air. Just you know, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. You can handle it. Yeah, I wouldn't have asked if I didn't think you could handle it. Well, thanks for believing in me. <laughs> thanks for believing. 
Um, man, that's tough. Um, or maybe there's a couple that stand out to you. Okay, I can definitely name a couple. Okay, that's um, fine. That's fine. I'll let you do that. Um, the first one definitely. Um, the the Jose Bautista home run in the division series against the Rangers. Oh. The the iconic bat flip and whatnot. That was awesome. Um. Oh, what's another good one? Um, the iconic Derek Jeter flip in Oakland. Yep. That gave him the nickname Mr. November. Yep. I think that was the game. I think that was. I don't know if that was, but yeah, no. Um, I don't, I don't know if that was or not, but yeah, no, the iconic Jeter flip, that was, that was cool. Um, goodness, what's another good one? Um... I don't really – definitely those two for sure. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm think of some other – as great as baseball is, you definitely got some amazing moments. So I, I got to I, – I, 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 I can definitely think of more than two. That's tough. Yeah. Obviously being here in – obviously being here in Minnesota, um, I think probably uh, – I think Duckett would agree with me on this one probably when the Twins won the Central in 09 in the last day of the year or the game 163. Yeah. That was kind of – I mean that was really nice, especially the iconic call. The Twins have won the Central. I'm a yeah, yeah. No. Duckett uh, being a Twins fan, I think he would probably know that one. Have to, I'll ask him about that right after this. Yeah, it was in 09. It was when they beat the Tigers. I think it was 160, 160. It was before they had the wild card series. Right. It was game actually 163. Um, let's see. What's another good? One? Um. Yeah, those are two great ones though. You would think you would think as great as baseball is creating some moments. You would. Um, oh, I got one. Um, this is kind of more of a comedy one. It's when Randy Johnson killed that bird. Oh yeah, blew up the bird in <laughs> spring training. He blew up the bird. That was awesome. Um, yeah. I don't know why, but I love a good. Uh, I love a good. Um, I love a good fight. Once in a great while, being a oh, hockey yeah. ex hockey player, hockey fan. Nolan Ryan being a Robin Ventura was a, is a good one too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot. Just put there's him in a, a headlock and just punching him. Man, this is tough. Anything? Um, another good one too. Um, I, actually, I'll say last year too. Um, in the World Series when Betts made that catch mm. and he's just, you know he's just running full sprint, excited as hell. That was awesome too. Yeah. But yeah. No. Definitely. Definitely. The Jose Bautista home run. Um. Randy Johnson killing that poor innocent flying bird, minding his own business, and then just bam. <laughs> I like it. Those are good ones. Those are really good yeah. ones. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Cool. Nice man. Well, right then the show. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate. It. I hope you had a good time again. Second time. Oh, it's always good seeing you, man. The Absolutely. Greatest. The greatest student manager in the history of college baseball. And I say, you heard it from Austin Jensen, you know. For, for Luke, Luke is guard, ladies and gentlemen. That's the, right. The the uh, goat at student managing Division Three college baseball. The uh, the absolute goat. Oh, I appreciate that, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is the part of the show. If you want to give out any social media stuff, people want to follow you, talk some sports, talk some crap too. Where do you do that work at? <laughs> Um, pretty much anywhere. Um, I'm actually uh, probably make the announcement now. Um, I'm working in the process of starting my own Twitch for video okay. games and whatnot. I haven't come up with a name yet. Absolutely. Probably on my other on my other social medias and whatnot. Um, but if you want to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, they're both at Austin Jensen Twenty One. Okay. You'll uh, if you have trouble because I know there's a lot of Austin Jensens in the world. And I figure that out on social media of all places. Um, if you see a uh, kid playing ba- uh, playing baseball, I think he's on third. Yeah, third base. That's me. That's my um, my avatar and whatnot. On both of my social medias, on Instagram and Twitter, easily yeah. find me. It's a, it's a red Bethany Vikings jersey. So yeah, at Austin Jensen twenty one. And obviously, when the post comes out, I'll, I can always put my information there too. Sure. Yeah. And then of yeah, course, cool. obviously, yeah, add me on Facebook. Add me on Facebook too, Austin Jensen. You know, awesome. same same profile picture, so me playing baseball. So, cool. Yeah, well, definitely be on the lookout for the Twitch stream, folks. That's going to be exciting to see that. I'm looking forward to watching that for sure. And then yeah. the social media. It's, it's, it's in the works. 
That's right. It's in the so be on the lookout, folks. Unwind be on the lookout. That's right. That's <laughs> awesome. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. All righty, folks. Well, if you would like to follow uh, any of the fans, follow Austin's Twitter account. If you want to follow my Twitter account, is at Lucas underscore Dorton. If you want to follow the page's Twitter account, at DND underscore podcast. Subscribe, share us on Twitter, or uh, sorry, YouTube, all of that. Um, but, folks, again, Austin, thank you for coming on again. Definitely have you on in the future for sure. I appreciate it for sure. Um, yeah, cool. Sounds great, George. Thank you so much for having me. It's always nope. good seeing you again, man. A- absolutely. Uh, but, anyways, this is the end of this episode. But as for Austin and myself, until next time, we are out.